Ringside Hield is that one. He's got to be competitive in the air. Well, that's one of the reasons why he's been brought to the to the team. Uh, his height is going to be immense tonight with free kicks. He's going to be the guy man marking. The most important guy is the top striker of Bahrain. Here's the Malaysia lineup. As expected, Carol Farmi will play in goal. The fullbacks are, of course, of the VK Ruben and Azrudin, starting wide left and wide right. Safi Rahim alongside Keiko Asami with No Sharrell and Amri Yaya as the front pairing. The width provided by Alex Asmudin, Akil and Eskun Alan. Good lineup. Well, I think a five in midfield will be the key tonight. They'll have to work their socks off. It will be the battle of the midfield. Players to look out for for Bahrain include Salman Issa, called Issa Ahmed on this lineup. He's uh, there as a striker, but he's vastly experienced. He's been through this Bahrain team right the way since they started 2004. He's got close to 140 international caps. Well, that's always great to have a player with that kind of experience when you're travelling away in such an important game. Uh, he's going to be key uh, in the midfield, and that is where the battle has to be won by any team who wants to win tonight. 32-year-old Englishman Tony Hudson, son of... Former Chelsea legend Alan Hudson is the man in charge of Bahrain these days. He speaks Arabic, he coaches in Arabic, he's spent some time as coach in Newport County, but he's a young coach who's just been promoted from the under-23s, and that can be good and bad, Stanley. Well, uh, it can be good when he actually starts one of his uh, prodigy from the under-23 who's up front. That guy must be really confident to start that he has a coach in the bench who trusts him. So there's the venue. It's a match that Malaysia, if they have serious ambitions of making it to Australia in 2015, simply cannot afford to lose. Indeed, even a draw would be a bad result because they've got to go to Manama. It'll be Bahrain in the all red. Missing a couple of key players though, Bahrain. Fauzi Ice, who's Probably their outstanding central midfielder. He's missing this game for personal reasons. And up front, uh, they're missing their main player, Hussein Ali, uh, which is a plus point for Malaysia. So we're uh, underway. AFC Asian Cup 2015 qualifier. Malaysia in the blue. And immediately picked off Abdul Wahab, who's a good ball player. Saeed Ahmad, the width provided by Walid. Launched long, straight though through to Carol Farmi. And that's Abdullah Al Haza to Giants at centre back. And any high ball is easy pickings. Al Husseini, one of those promoted from the under 23s with the coach. Saeed Ahmad. Salman Issa just trying to pick it in and Kay Rubens, first involvement. Your thoughts on Rubens' elevation to starting position of right back? Well, uh, he's done well with the Madega Cup team under Ong Kim Sui, coming fresh from a big victory in Kuantan where Malaysia won the Madega Cup. He'll be beaming with confidence to prove himself. Uh, the critic's wrong, actually. Saeed Dia coming short. Al Husseini pushed off the ball by Gurusami. Gunala. Flanko was held back. Amri Aya can't get the better of Abdullah Aman and it seemed like he took a knock to the nose. It seems to be a familiar theme for Malaysia's front men. Abdul Wahab. This is Sayed Diha. Salman Issa, predominantly left-footed, couldn't control it on his right. Abdul Wahab nipping at the heels once, twice, three times of Amri Yaya and a yellow card inside two minutes for Abdul Wahab Ali. Well, it's a great run by Amri. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was going across Abdul Wahab Ali. And Abdul Wahab did kick him three times. Good call by the referee. The yellow card certainly deserving. Japanese referee Ryuji Sato stamping his authority instantly. What if you get three fouls? 
Well, he did kick him a couple of times. Um, well, he was from the back, and, uh, and the, the law says if you're from the back, you get a yellow card. Shafi Krahim. As Tony Hudson watches on, wearing Mourinho-like in his attire. Shafiq's delivery looks for Taj. Taj took out his own man, Amri Aya. Call next time, I think Amri's going to say to him. Said Ahmad. Abdul Wahab just clipped by Gurusami. Actually, it's Gunalan. Zafon. Over from right back here, and Amri Zwantaj, of course, had a partnership for ATM last season. Here's Wahab. Saeed Diha. Saeed. Abdullah. Full back. Just trying to be played in. Nice idea from Al Maloub to play in Abdullah Aman. They look comfortable on the ball, do Bahrain. Well, they are a footballing team, they like to play the football, even though they've got physical, they do not long, knock long balls just for fun. They try to play as much as they can. Again, the aerial ball picked off by Bahrain. Good challenge from Ruben. You know one thing with Kay Ruben, he won't duck out of a challenge. Said Diha. Well, wanting the throw in. And Malaysia rather being forced onto the back foot in these early stages. Asmudin onto Shafiq. And Adil. More Sharrell onto Amri Yaya. Defending from Abdullah Al Hazar. Ridzwan, who was outstanding in ATM's second leg victory over Lions 12 last week, but red carded in the last minute, so this is the only match Amaridzwan will play this month. Shafiq is caught late by Abdul Wahab Ali. A little tug there from behind, certainly a fall. If you're on a yellow card, not the wisest thing to do. Adil, could pick out the pass. Gurusami finds Kunalan. Little burst of pace from Eskunalan. Blocked by Abdullah Aman. Rudin, down the line and knocked out for a throw-in by Abdullah Aman. Earlier on this week, Qatar beat Yemen 6-0. Qatar, the outstanding team of this group. I think it's second place that's really up for grabs. A little push in the back from Saeed Ahmad on Kunala. And Malaysia have a free kick in a decent area. It's been a very good start from Kunala. He's been providing the option, making darting runs down the left. And suddenly a fall there as well. Ritzwan at the far post being picked up by Al Hazar. Adil also in there looking to make a run. What kind of delivery has Shafiq Rahim got? Can't beat the first man, it breaks though to Guru. Take on Al Maloub. Throw in. Problem for Shafiq from those free kicks, he hasn't got a natural target. Well, I think uh, logically, with the physics of um, 
Bahrain, you would expect that the target man would be Amir Rizwan Taj, who's been going up for the free kicks. But it's pretty easy to, to notice who is the target man, so it'll be a little bit hard. We should try and knock it in the near post. Which I think is what he was doing. And then if he doesn't succeed in getting it over the first man, we'll complain. <laughs> Here's a deal. Ruben. Saeed picks it up. Who's just controlling in the middle of the park is Abdul Wahib Ali. Very fluent formation for Bahrain. Saeed. Saleh Abdul Hamad. Abdul Al Hazar. Wahid. Nice little football, just inviting Gurusami to make the challenge. And then Shafiq gives it away to Abdul Wahib. Salmanisa, gem of a pass, and Ruben dived in. Your thoughts on that one, Stanley? I heard an intake of breath. Well, it was a ball that was 50-50. He did throw himself, but I think he got the ball. As the ball direction did show, like the Bahrain player did touch the ball, but that is going to be a soft call if the referee did give a penalty. one Englishman who disagrees with you. What a great run from Saeed Deha behind the fullback. But you can see referees giving that week in, week out. Here's Saeed Deha once again. Picked off by Azrudin. Abdul Wahab. Taj clears, looks for North Sharrell. Up against the Twin Towers, second ball picked up by Norsha Lidlantala. Al Husseini will chase, Adil does well. Gurusami, good distribution. There's the outlet, Kunala. On the other side is Asmudin. Walid's header. Abdullah clears to Saeed Ahmed. Side glides past a couple of challenges. Shafiq. Gurusami. And Kunala, the option. Side Al Jafar with pretty dreadful clearance. It's been a couple of times that Guru Sami has actually picked out Kunalan on the left. And everything for Malaysia has been going through the left so far. Malaysia defeated 2-0 in Qatar, a 2-1 victory over Yemen. That's got then three points from two games. 100% record for Bahrain. They beat Qatar 1-0 in Manama, which is a terrific result for them. Yemen in their opener. But this is not the Bahrain who made it through to the qualifiers, denied the death in both 2006 and 2010 World Cup, losing out in the most heartbreaking of circumstances. Well, missing a penalty in the process, losing 1 0 to New Zealand. But they certainly know a thing or two about not qualifying. No Sharon to Amri. Had to make sure he got something out of that Amri Yaya. Adil finds Amaridzwan. You don't really want Amaridzwan to be the main distributor, but that's not a bad ball in. Maybe you do want him to be the main distributor if he's passing like that. Walid Al Hayam. This is Salman Issa. Al Husseini. 
It's a delicious pass into Al Husseini from Salman Issa, isolating Adil. Well, this is the thing about the Bahrain players. They love to take on players. Uh, and that's where Malaysia got to make sure they're not getting beaten easily, especially the Malaysian defenders. And Adil uh, is coming from a 6-1 defeat. It will be a good platform for him to regain his momentum tonight if Malaysia does get a win and he helps them defensively. I'm doing my best not to mention that. <laughs> but the free kick will be floated in by Salman Issa. Got a delicious left peg. Plenty of height up in the penalty area. Fisted clear by Carol Farmy. Disappointing from Salman in, in the end. Abdul Wahab. Sami Alassani again, lovely footwork into the penalty area. Ruben knees it clear. Walid Al Haya out to go a long way till Shafiq slammed the door shut. No Sharo beaten by Abdullah Al Hazar. Salman Issa. My break to Al Husseini. What a challenge, Amarid Rantaj. Wonderful defending from the ATM centre back. Well, that's a quality, quality defending from Amir Rizwantad, making sure that shot didn't go through. But then was a mistake by Malaysia, playing a bit too direct. Shafiq was trying to pick out No Sharon. It's a very direct pass. The centre back intercepts and a counter attack. And you don't want to be doing that against the Bahrain team often. Both centre backs have lumbered forward. Saleh Abdul Hamid and Abdullah Al Hazar. Flicked by Adil. They dealt with that one quite comfortably in the end, Malaysia. And every time Malaysia does consider corner, and you look at the height difference and you think about you don't want to actually allow them to get too many corners. to Saeed Deja. Given away to Amri Yaya, but there's no blue shirts ahead of him. Just to make sure he retains possession. Both coaches very animated on the touchline in their technical areas. Wahab getting in ahead of Amri Yaya. Possessional stats just in favour of Bahrain at the moment, 51% to 49. It seems more than that, doesn't it? Saleh. Abdullah Aman. Al Husseini again makes a, a run down the channels and Amarid's one. Zaid Ahmed. Chance for Walid to drive forward. Lovely ball from Walid. Just drifted away from Salman Issa. Maybe five years ago he might have had the pace to get there. Instead, Gurus Army comes away. As Mooding couldn't get control of it. Malaysia just can't get hold of the ball at the moment. Sustained period of possession for the Pearl of the Gulf. Not been without their internal political problems in recent years, and that's had an impact on their team. Some of their star players not eligible or not selected for the national team anymore. Harold Farmy. Picked up by Abdul Wahib Ali. Ruben 
does well. Shafiq down the channels for North Sharrell. Hussein gives his keeper a nervous moment. But Malaysia just can't get hold of the ball, Stanley. Well, I think the biggest problem Malaysia is facing at the moment is every time they retain the ball, they have lack of options. You can see that's very, very easy for the Bahrain defenders to read because there's only one option and they're going to pass to that option and they are intercepting the passes. Salman Issa. Abdul Wahab. Said he has little touch. Malaysia get the tackle in. But Bahrain retain possession. Salmanisa. It's one touch Malaysia, ten touches Bahrain at the moment. Adil covers. Fancy footwork from Adil. Wahib Walid, sorry, picks up the second ball. Saeed. Walid, chance for Saeed Deha to turn. Saeed Ahmad drives to the edge of the penalty area, but it breaks down on the edge of the box. Then possession given away, and you're gesticulating, Stanley. What a, what's the solution for Malaysia? Well, the players without the ball have to make more runs off the ball for the player who's having the ball. There is no option. Uh, you saw Asaru didn't get the ball. There's only one option. Kunalan was running. And immediately you saw two Bahrain players running towards him and the ball was played to Kanan. They intercept the ball, they get, they play the ball again. And you cannot last in football matches if you keep losing the ball and only tracking back. Approaching the 20 minute mark. Possession start that was fairly even five minutes ago. Massively in Bahrain's favour. 60%. Abdul Hamid with provided Abdul Wahid Al Maloub Salman Issa Al Hazar Adil intercepts Nazmuddin Akil has some rare time on the ball Kunala Put ten passes together, Malaysia. Amri Yaya. Might fancy it from there, Amri. Deflected. Positive build up for Malaysia. Amri comes short. There's a lot of space as soon as he turns, he goes forward. There's no harm when you have a striker trying to gain confidence, taking a shot, and it goes on target. Ruben's header though, as we're watching a comfortable save for Saeed Mohamed. Now that no Sharl, Kunala. Can he run at Abdullah Aman? Gurusami. Amri Yaya. Tries the difficult pass, Amri. Kunala's snapped out by Abdul Wahab Al Maloub. Taj loses out Al Husseini, surrounded by blue. Well done, Azru Azruddin. <laughs> Guru. Foul <laughs> from K. Gurusami. A little word from referee Sato. I certainly got to admire Malaysia's tracking back. As soon as they lose the ball, you saw Kunalan running at 100 meter pace. And that's a little bit late from Gurusami, a bit overzealous, but that is how they've been defending. They want to absorb everything they can, and they have to do that tonight. His side, Ahmad. Al Hazar. Down the corner, Al Hayam. Oh, 
Discipline defending from Malaysia, it's two banks of four. Bahrain overloading midfield, so that's how they're getting so much possession. No Charles snaps at the heels. He went down a little bit easier, did um, Al-Wahab al -Maloub. It's been tough for Malaysia in midfield, despite both teams setting up on a 4-5-1 formation. Because the centre-backs of Bahrain do get involved in attack, they carry the ball forward. And you'll need no Sharul or Amri, or even both the strikers to track back at times, because they're overloading that midfield with numbers. It's introduced a very fluid style to Bahrain. Tony Hudson. And success with the Under-23 Gold Cup, the first international tournament success Bahrain have ever had. Despite their progress in World Cups, etc. Now then, free kick opportunity. Saleh stings the palms and cleared by Adil. Saleh Abdul Hamid there, the centre back, planting his luck from 40 yards. Amri Yaya of Salango. Gurusami. On to Ruben. Here's his football for ATM. And Pahang. And of course, one of the semi finalists in the Watson's Piala Malaysia, which the first leg of the semi finals takes place this Friday. Well, this Friday and Saturday, ATM versus Kalantan. And Pahang taking on Sarawak. This international match coming in the midst of. The most intense of the domestic competitions. A little pull back is the judgment of Sato on Azrudin. Well, certainly went past Azrudin. It was a tug behind. And that's what I've been saying. They've been trying to go past the right and the left back of Malaysia, trying to create from the side because they've got physic in the middle of the field. As soon as they put in that cross, you know danger. There's five six-foot-plus players for Salmanisa to aim for. Al Hazar is 17. He's been picked up by Amaridzwan. ball in. It's been given as a, a goal kick because Abdul Aman got the flick for a lovely delivery. Well, it did. Uh, everyone rushed at the near post. It's coming off from a training ground. You could see no one in the far post as soon as the ball went in. But if you if it did get a touch of a Bahrain or a Malaysian player, that free kick usually end up in the back of the net. To be fair, it looks like Malaysia got lucky there. It looked like it came off Gurusami's head. possession for Malaysia is a real problem. If they lump the ball high, they're losing possession and they're being overloaded in midfield. Well, comparing to the game that how they started against Yemen, they had Mahali Jasuli every time providing that width, that extra man overlapping, and that's where they got both the goals actually. And uh, it was a brilliant performance to get that 2-1 win. And today they do lack that overlapping run, but it could be too early to open up your defense as Bahrain can expose if you do open up. Here's Ruben, who's in for Mahali, who's carrying a knock. Oh, that's short. No, Sharo will chase. And then Asmudin. Just trying to play in Shafiq Rahim. A couple of times Bahrain have been a little bit careless knocking the ball back to their goalkeeper. Salmanisa just clipping the heels of Keigurosami. 
pretty sure Rajagopal has recognized that if Bahrain is under pressure, they have actually done a loose pass a few times and uh, we can maybe capitalize on, on those mistakes if you do put a lot of pressure on the Bahrain players. Adil launches it again, the high ball picked up by Bahrain, as is the second ball. Gurusami held off Sami Al Husseini though is offside. Well, has the free kick been given in advance? I think that's maybe what the Japanese referee is doing. He might have given a free kick there. No, he hasn't. He played an advantage, the man was offside. Tough luck. Kunala, he's been the bright spark for Malaysia. Matyo, trying to get to the byline. It's the space he loves. Boosted high. Amri Yaya beaten in the air. And Walid Al Hayam. Saeed Diha. He's only a youngster, this Saeed Diha. He's a confident player. Oh, Sami Al Husseini. sometimes plays too much football for a centre-back. Uh, he does have that quality, but at times he needs to play a simple football, which is clear the ball if you're facing in the back of your own goal. Ruben's acrobatics. That's Rudin. Once players to come short and everyone was running long, eventually Amri cushions it. Amar Idzwan, Kunala, Amri Yaya. As you say, when he comes deep, Malaysia have the extra body to play the ball into. You, you, you realise that the Bahrain centre-backs never tracks him. They stay in line, which means if the midfielder, if the defensive midfielder doesn't pick up, which is in the back of him, Amri comes and collects, Amri will have space to turn. Villa's clearance. We're at the half hour mark. It's Malaysia nil, Bahrain nil. AFC Asian Cup qualifier at Shah Alam. Amaritzwan looking for Guru. Giant figure of Saeed got in the way. Lovely ball, Amri, the target. Saleh Zena. What can Kunalan do? Kunalan looks for post. And then instantly, Malaysia got four bodies in the penalty area and looked a real attacking threat. It was a quality ball from Kunalan, trying to find Azamuddin Akil, but earlier the ball from Ruben was a splendid. He tried to pick out, and Amri, the Bahrain defense did get a little touch and got lucky with that, and Amri would have got onto that. First corner for Malaysia. His corner is cleared and Malaysia end up going all the way back to Carol Farmy. He's got no real option but to pump it long. Now Ritzwan gets a touch. Kunala. Saleh forced out to the middle. Guru. Turn a pace from Keiguru Sami. Al Husseini. Much better performance in Malaysia in the last 10 minutes. They have gained some momentum. As you can see, Rajagopal earlier was saying, try to press them higher. They've been doing that. And you can see Bahrain's not so comfortable as they started the match. Stanley Bernard, who played his football in India and Malaysia until injury forced him to take a year in the commentary box. Adding the thought. You grew up with a lot of these lads, Stanley, so you... Obviously, you're, you're favouring them, you're hoping they'll do well, but tactically, I'm looking for you to pick out the bones on what they're doing well. Which at the moment is just pressing a little bit better. Ruben. Asmudin. 
Sorry. Yeah, Asmuddin. Shafiq. Asmuddin from behind. So what have they been doing better in the last 10 minutes? Well, they've been pressing Bahrain a little higher, not giving them too much of time and space with the ball. And as soon as, soon as they get the ball, they got runners off the ball and they've got option. When you have option, it's easy to play football. Abdul Ahmad, closed down by Kunala. Al Hazar to Saeed. Saeed Dihaz, nice little attempted flick. Very impressed with how Bahrain have virtually got three players who are just floating all over the pitch. Salman Issa wanted the foul and gets the foul. And that's been actually causing Malaysia a little problem as they have been having a free roll. And as soon as they go wide, the players on the side has been told to take on the right back or the right midfield who's defending against them, go to the byline and try to put in a cross because they've got height in the box. And that's where most Malaysia have considered the free kick so far. Salman Ahmed will curl this one in again. Five, six footers in the penalty area. Work to do for Malaysia defensively. Amaridzwan, good powerful header. North Sharrell turns his man. And there is there blocked off. But no free kick is given. Walid looks as innocent as he can. And we just hope that North Sharrell hasn't been caught on the nose. I think it's a poor, poor decision by the referee. There was no intention of playing the ball by Walid. Yes, you could have an argument. And he knew exactly what he was doing. No, Sharrell puts the ball against his side, runs him around him. And that is certainly a blatant fall on No Sharrell. That's not the spirit of Eid, is it? There was no intention of trying to get the ball. He knew exactly he's been beaten for dead. He knocks onto No Sharrell and the referee doesn't see it. And the referee's argument will be saying that the ball was too far. Interesting, looks like we're going to get a change and it's a change up front as Ali Tayeb, who's just recovered from a foot injury himself. He's going to come on for Sami Al Husseini. And there's no sign that he's limping. He gets a high five from his coach. There's the incident once again. Yes, he's well, he's a good eight yards, nine yards away from the line of the ball. And it's disappointing from the referee. It's because that could have been a chance for Malaysia to create a goal scoring. Um, but the referee doesn't see it that way. I, I have no clue why. But it's a blatant fall. Bahrain gave Malaysia the ball. Malaysia give it straight back. Saleh Abdul Hamid, who's had one of three shots on goal for Bahrain in this half. Immediately, Al Tayeb is the target. He's, he's another big, bulky fella. It's been a good 15 minute spell for Malaysia. Since they've been trying to press higher, they've been, they've been getting more results in terms of getting more possession. But they will need that win. Through the middle, they're gonna they're gonna get into physical battles. The Lantans Carol Farming. Again, the high ball just comes straight back at Malaysia. Al Malud. Mr. El Tayeb. Ali Wahab. Just trying to disrupt things there, Gurusami, but Ali Tayeb. 
uh, miscommunication with Al Abdul Wahab Al Maloub. Um, a shot there of Tony Hudson, the Bahrain coach. You're, if you were him, Stanley, would you be happy or frustrated that you've not got yourself in the lead? Well, I think he'd be much frustrated for the past 20 minutes, the fact that his team has lost a bit of momentum. Malaysia has been taking the game to them. And that's why probably why he made the change up front. Shafiq wins possession. Has moved in. Well, keep got everything behind that. Good footwork from the keeper. Didn't see Sami Al Husseini limping off the field, and uh, it must be a tactical change. Adil under pressure from the man who's just come on. Finds us. Rudin from Salango looks for his Salango teammate. No Sharrell. Kunala. Kunala finds a little space to play in. No Sharrell. Attacks the penalty area. Cross is blocked. Abdul Wahab does well. Ruben steps in. And Ruben might fancy that. Just took a little knock and spoons it over. It was that last minute pressure from the Bahrain midfielder that actually took away that step he had, and that's why he boomed it away. It was a good spell. It was easily about 20. Sorry, it was about 12 or 13 passes easily by Malaysia. Good movement by Kunal and Guru Sami and no Sharol. Walid. Ruben this time steps in, has moved in. Malaysia have got a man over if they can play it quickly. They can't, and the door's been closed by Bahrain. Moved in just a little knock to his backside from Walid. Not been able to get into the game as moved in Akil. But this is what you need to do when you don't have option. You need to carry the ball. He did it well. He's been he's been struggling to get into the game. But he's not lacking any confidence. He didn't have any option when he had the ball on the sideline. Bahrain defending the 18-yard line rather than anything deeper. So there's a lot of space for Shafiq to knock this ball in. Amarit's one's come short. That's interesting. Shafiq goes square. Has Rudin. Diagonal for Amarit's one. Taj! Well worked, but offside. Clever, clever, clever stuff. I couldn't figure that out. Why well, I mean, his own touch was sitting at near post, but it is good that he's coming off the training ground. Oh, that was a close call by the linesman. I don't know if I would have given that. I know you wouldn't have given that. Amriyaya. Leaving the foot a little bit raised. A little bit of overreaction, I think, coming from the man who was booked in the second minute, Abdul Wahab Ali. Okay. It's a okay. little bit high from Amiraya. Oh dear. He's actually have a history against Bahrain. We got him banned for a year due to spitting in 2007 when they lost that 4 0 game in Manama. Ball looking for Altayeb. So dangerous dropping between centre back and goalkeeper. No Sharol. Still no Sharol. Amri Yaya. Shafiq. Nicely worked. It's an excellent build up. No Sharol keeps the ball well, finds Amri Yaya. Amri knew exactly 
where Shafiq was, but Shafiq certainly didn't get that connection he wanted. We've seen Shafiq blast that before to the back of the net. But it's always going to be easy for the goalkeeper. Well, Shafiq Rahim in a Malaysia shirt looks a, a completely different player to the poor fella who's been struggling for Johor Darul Taksim as Amri picks up a yellow card for one reckless challenge too many. Well, coming back to Shafiq Rahim, some players just need that love and a bit of different. They need to be adjusted to the new team and uh, some coaches just know how to get the best of a player. Every player is different in a football field. Confirmation of the yellow card for Amri. He was for just being a little bit late in an earlier challenge. So one yellow card apiece. Amri Yaya for Malaysia. Wahab Ali for Bahrain. He remains goalless at Charlan. Possessional stats 50-50. Both teams have had moments of dominance. Shots three apiece on target, two apiece. Corners one apiece. Bahrain was the better side in the first 28 to 30 minutes. But since then, Malaysia have gone and taken the game towards them, created chances. Abdul Wahab dead to the byline. Terrific run to the near post from Al Tayyip. And again, that we provided goes past Asaruddin. And I think Ideal just did enough to make sure that the striker actually got a bit off the near post position. And it's always tough from that position. If he was a couple of yards back, and that would have tripped in at the near post. Malou, Saeed. Free kick given, belatedly, no Sharol. Just clipping the back of Abdul Wahab Ali. We're going to have 60 seconds added on. It is a free kick, he does catch him. Saeed Diha. Adil did ever so well to deny Tayeb a clear shot. Zaid Dahir, as Adil blocks it for a corner kick. Desperate moments for Malaysia. Zaid Dahir, edge of the box. Oh, what a strike! Abdullah Aman, the fullback in first half injury time, fires one top corner. Marin stole the words out of my mouth. I was just about to say. No, Sharon and Amriya should even get down. It's only one minute left. A quick corner taken, a good setup, but what a finish from Abdullah Ahmad. Quality, top corner, no chance for Karo Fami. Got everything right, got the curl he wanted, got the technique right. And everything changes as in they move into the first half for Malaysia. Couldn't have placed it better. Abdullah Aman, a postage stamp. And it's the last kick of the first 45 minutes. And that is a kick to the groin for Malaysia. That is a killer blow. It's always been said that you do not concede in the early hours of the game and the last minute of the first half, second half. Half time though. Frustration for Kyrol Farmi. It's Malaysia nil, Bahrain won a cracker from Abdullah Aman. Serious work to be done by Rajakop. So Bahrain tails up. They say there's never a bad time to score a goal. Surely there's not many better times, Stanley Samuel. Well, in a football match, you could listen to a million managers or coaches. They would tell you that is a killer blow. And the sad thing about Malaysia, it was against the run of play. In the last 15 minutes of the first half, they were doing absolutely everything right, except for that goal. So Bahrain will get us underway. They made one first half substitution. I'll give you the lineups once we get underway. Muted looking for the pacey and impressive Saeed Diha. 
Bates and he fights back and wins a lovely tackle to the dispossess Kunala. Okay, Ruben clears. Abdul Wahab put a little bit high. Free kick goes to Malaysia. Malaysia's lineup. Carol Farmi in goal. Kay Ruben into on Taj. Adil Zafan and Sridin Putra are the back four. Holding midfielder Kay Gurusami with Shafiq Rahim alongside him in the middle. Kunala left. As Moudin Akko right with Amri Yaya and Noor Sharal Idlan Talaha. The two strikers. The Wahab wins another headed clearance and Saeed Ahmad to Wali. They were very impressive for about 30 minutes were Bahrain. Kept possession really well. As Walid finds his goalkeeper and captain Saeed Mohammed. Former Malaysia International, M League and I League professional. Stanley Samuel is alongside him in the commentary box. I say former, hopefully still to be in the future. But what the Malaysia need to do, Stanley? We, we had an animated discussion at half-time. It's your final conclusion. So, picks up the spare ball. Well, as we said, what was the transition between the first 30 minutes of Bahrain controlling the game and the momentum shifted to Malaysia's side? As soon as they pressed Bahrain high and provide options with their teammates, they did really well. Kunala, Amri Yaya. Just a little bit of Amri magic on the edge of the box. Shafiq to Ruben. Three in the penalty area. He's Asmudin Akil from Pahang. Ruben available. Shafiq under pressure. And look at Bahrain's setup. Ten players, not even one striker is up there. They are pressing Malaysia every time Malaysia get the ball. When, when they win the ball, it's the impressive side, Deha, who can advance and play a poor pass. Amrik, tackle coming from the goal scorer, Abdullah Aman. What a strike, it's first international goal. to Ruben, he was caught a little bit after the ball had gone there. As for Bahrain, their lineup: Said Mohammed in goal, Abdullah Aman, Salah Abdul Hamid, Abdullah Al Hazar, and Walid Al Hayim are the back four. The holding midfield is Abdul Wahab Ali with Said Ahmed, Salman Issa, Said Dia, Abdul Wahab Al Maloub floating in front of him. Ali Tayeb has come on up front for Sami Al Husseini. Was Altair chasing? Ruben quickly sit down the line. Again, a giant figure of Abdullah Al Hazar with the header. And there's a physical difference between the teams in the as the teams came out for the. Ooh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Muhammad forced into a hurried clearance, pressing high. Side here. Side here. Salman. Well, you could see what Malaysia has been trying to do in the last few minutes, putting pressure on every Bahrain player that they can, and that is why you saw the goalkeeper actually trying to clear the ball because they are pressing them, and that is what is needed tonight if they want to get something out of this game. Centre back Saeed stretch to get that ball ahead of Noor Sharal. He's limping as Bahrain come forward through Saeed Dia. Here is Dia. Looks a very impressive find, Saeed Dia. 22 years of age. Saeed Ahmad. He's a modern coach, is Tony Hudson, one who encourages. Lives on his toes. 
As we see that shot go over, there's going to be some treatment for Salah Abdul Hamid. He picked up a knock in Malaysia's last attack, and it, it did look like he stretched the groin there. That'll be a massive blow as he's been solid as a rock in the heart of the centre back. Both the centre backs has you can see contrasting difference between the height of Amiraya No Sharo compared to the two centre backs of Bahrain. And hopefully a shorter one comes on. <laughs> but in terms of ability. Amriya and Nusho, that makes up for the height. They have flair, they can take on players. But they need to get the ball to their feet. And they need to get some support. They can't do it on their own. And the biggest problem is the Guru Sami and Shafiq has been too deep. They've been not too close to, to help Shafiq, sorry, to help Amriya or Nusho. As you can see, every time Amriya comes down in that number 10 role, they actually find space. Keep a, a little eye on the centre back. Uh, there's nobody warming up to replace him just yet. So temporarily, Malaysia up against ten men. Zamorid to Antaj. Guru. The Wahab has slotted into centre back and makes a strong challenge. Said beaten by Gurusami. Shafiq. Ruben. Who scampers into the corner. Tipped in play, but forced off by Walid Al Hayam. Pressing again, though, from Malaysia. Six players in that shot. But it's again, you can see, as soon as they get into a physical battle, Bahrain players do outmuscle them and retain position. And they got to avoid these physical battles. No Sharrell. Oh, No Sharrell penalised. And that's what No Sharrell Iblan Talaha does so well. Attacks the penalty area, attacks the byline. Well, I think it's a soft call from the linesman. He go past the player, he loses the ball, but he still goes for the ball. Loses his footing, the centre back. I would have given the benefit of doubt for No Sharo as an attacking player. And expect nothing less. Malaysia nil, Bahrain one. Ruben just leans into the back of Ali Tayyip. What a thrill. What a strike. Right, substitution looks like it's going to be made. And it's, is it a like for like? The number six, uh, Dawood. Dawood Saad is on. My understanding is he's a full back. I've seen him play live, but I believe he plays right back. Just get confirmation of that substitute. But it is indeed Dawood who's in at right back. I think it's Saleh Abdul Hamid who's gone because his Dia getting to the byline. Ultras doing their best as ever to give their support to the home team. Play deal. Closed down by Salmanisa. Wafts it in. Looks for North Sharon. That was awkward. For the man who's been asked to now play at centre back, Abdul Aman, and it took a little bit of adjustment.
Second corner for Malaysia. Adil attacks the six yard box. And he's lost the ball in a dangerous area. And there's Amri Yaya. And there's red shirts piling forward in support. And Abdul Wahab Al Maloub. Saeed Ahmed. Al Maloub with time and space. And then Ruben hacks it clear. There was a suggestion of a hand against Amarit Wantaj. And as you can see, here, Said Ahmed had a lot of time and space. Did he did hit the ball of the hand, but the referee's argument will be a ball hand. Abdul Wahab. Well, it's cross. It's powerful header, plenty of distance. Possession run back by Bahrain. Said here was the intended recipient. Kunalan. Some of the feistiness you were talking about, including recent clear. It's been an argument for years in Malaysian football how vulnerable Asaruddin Putra would be if Kunalan doesn't track back. And he's been a sole reason. Defensively, he's done really well, Kunalan. Every time he goes forward, he's really quick to come back. Dawood, first involvement, it's the header. Said Dia, sliding tackle from Amaritwan. Sorry, from Azrudin. Salman Issa. Salman! <laughs> there was venom in that shot from Salman Issa. Gets the plot from the coach, and what a strike from Salman Issa. 138 caps, and that could have added <laughs> to his uh, 21 goals so far. Looked like Harold Fahmy did get it covered, but you can never know with the ball spinning. It's a stinging of a shot. Shafiq tries to play an hammer and um, Asmudin. Ruben gets the tackling. Shafiq this time. Asmudin. He can run at Al Hazar. Al Hazar though, has a long leg and a big boot. Well done. Let's move it in and then Walid can clear. Idil will be forced to go back. And then keeper, Kamal Farmi, launches forward. Lewis Army dispossessed by Salmanisa. One of the survivors of the fourth place that Bahrain won in the 2004 Asian Cup in China. That was the first awakening of the golden generation of Bahrain. They made it to the playoffs of World Cup 2006 and 2010, cruelly denied on both occasions. New Zealand on one occasion, Trinidad and Jamaica having drawn away, they lost at home to Panama. They were promised that place if they did beat New Zealand by their Prime Minister. And he comes out after the game and says, no more incentives like that because it's too much pressure for the players. No Sharol. Brilliant play from No Sharol in Lantella. No Sharol. Well, there's the magic you were talking about. And only denied at the very end by Abdullah Al Hazar. Who's down on the floor is the big Bahrain defender. The referee stopped the game. But what a surge from North Shah Lidlan Talaha. And it looked a little bit like Maradona turning like a little. He'll go past one. And he goes past with his pace, with his strength. Goes past another player. But what an important tackle from Al Hazar. And that tackle actually did save from North Sharol having a shot at the goalkeeper. It would have been a one to one if that tackle has not come in. And you will need that miracle from him tonight. Sometimes something like that can spark a team into believing that they can get something out of a game. At the moment, Malaysia trailing to that stunner of a goal. 
first half injury time from Abdullah Aman. Al Mazar is just going to be given some treatment right underneath the ultras. I'm sure they'll sing something nice to him. Well, if you want to be a team who's going to be qualifying for the Asia Cup, you want to look around in the pitch, in your teammates, you want to have that match winner. A player who can turn on, even when the team is not playing well, but he can turn on. People, the teammates can draw inspiration from him, and no Sharo certainly sits in that bracket in the Malaysian camp. Chaffee. Goswami gives away possession, which got well straight his anger which is very rare for Roger Gopal Dia Shafiq works hard to win it back here is Shafiq Rahim Saeed Dia wins it back off Shafiq Saeed Ahmad National stats 50 50. The shots from Bahrain seven to Malaysia's three, three of which have been on target. One, of course, means that K Raja Gopal's team trail by a goal to nil. A game they, they really can't afford to lose. Tired as well. Tired. Done to clear by Amaridzwan. He's acquitted himself pretty well at centre back, Cameron Zwantaj. Walid comes forward, Saeed. Salmanisa. Oh, peach of a pass. Flags up for offside. But Salmanisa threading the eye of a needle to play in Walid Al Hayam. It was a pitch of a pass. But the problem did start when Ruben stopped following back, following the player, and went back to his position. And Azamuddin Akil was already there, and it was a flat-footed defence, and that ball slipped through. The only luck was that he was offside. Here's Adil. Goes down by Salman Issa. Ruben. Into Amriyaya. Shafiq. Well, he didn't telegraph it. He was picked off well by Abdullah Al Hazar. Zudin pushed over by Saidia. And again, Malaysia is lacking that spark in the middle of the field. There's no any sort of creativity so far. They need to build up play. Alan can only pick out the one red shirt when there were three blue ones. Said. <laughs> it was raised. Kurosami. Okay, we're looking at the substitutes. The likes of Fakri's in there, the likes of Nizad. Would you see a change? Would you? If you would, what would you do? Well, we are certainly missing major, major players in one Zach, especially in attacking, Fadli Shahs and uh, Nick Sharul Azim in centre-back. But we've got to do what we have. Salman Issa. Goes short to Saeed Dia. Salman. Saeed Ahmad slipped as he went for the ball. At 1-0, all it needs is one moment of inspiration. No Sharo. No Sharo. He had Amri Yaya to his right. Was it the right option? And another glimpse of what No Sharo can do against run of play. Goes for the spectacular. No harm in it. The ball was bouncing right in front of him. Now they've got possession as Norsharal. 
shows he just didn't quite catch it right. But the throwing goes to Bahrain. 25 minutes to rescue something. They've still got to go to Manama. They've still got to entertain Qatar and go to whenever the Yemen match will be played. Adil's header. Saeed. Saeed Dia. Clever. This is Al Maloub. Salmanisa. It's the ball now from under his feet. Dulwaha Valley. Looking back uh, to your question earlier on the bench, <laughs> not to the liking of many who will be listening to us today, I think we don't have depth inexperience on the bench with so many players missing. But the most likely player that I would like to see on the pitch is Karel Mohamed, who came on the last match in the last 10 minutes against Yemen, came on and put on a good performance, got that winning goal, and you will bank on someone who has that kind of experience in a match like this. Shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder challenge there between number 18, Ali Tayeb and Adil. Amri's flick. Shafiq just couldn't get there. He's uh, nipping ahead of him. Tayeb. It's back from injury himself is Tayeb. He's not quite up to the, the pace of the game. He will guide it back to his goalkeeper. Neat and drink to Abdullah Al Hazar. No Sharon. Shafiq. Bahrain condensing the play ever so well. It's groans from the crowd, but it admire the defensive work of the Gulf State team. No Sharrell. Shafiq. That's moved in. Two in the penalty area. And I tell you what, that was a hair's breadth away from Amri Yahya. And Bahrain put it out of play because Abdullah Al Hazar is once again down, but good play. Quality build up for Malaysia. Shafiq Graham picking out Azamuddin Akil, and that was a whisker away. Did try to pick out Amri Aya, who was at the near post, a driving cross and any sort of touch, and that could have been at the back of the net. But again, it's that little spark from No Shallow drifting past two players, shimming through another player, picking out Shafiq Graham. Shafiq Graham to Amriya and... Concerns defensively for Bahrain. Donat al Hazar. this is the second time he's been stretched off in the last 10 minutes. Already without Hussein Baba, who was injured in the friendly match against Thailand. But no Sharrell, this is what he does so well. That's how the injury occurred. Not to no Sharrell, but to the defender who caught him. Change is immediately made. Abdullah Al Hazar's game is over. And another veteran, Mohamed Salmin, comes on. Another veteran of 2004. Uh, a 
midfield player, so again, there's going to be a lot more reorganisation for Bahrain. You see their confusion as Norsharo! What a strike for Norsharo! Inland Zalaha! And as I was just saying, if there is a glimmer of hope in the Malaysian camp, a match winner in the Malaysian camp, it is North Sharol. A world-class finish from him. Picks his spot onto his right. Four balls, boom, you get it. And no chance for the goalkeeper. And a brilliant, brilliant finish from North Sharol in Lantalaha. He's been absolute magnificent throughout the match. Deserving that goal. Goalkeeper couldn't see it, saw it late. But even if he did see it early, there's no chance he would have gotten a gun into that ball. Well, you look at the look there from Subahan to his coach. He's saying, hey, we're still in here. You keep on fighting with us, son, because these boys are backing you. Well, you just picked it out well about Bahrain's defence. The shifting was happening. And before the shifting could happen, number 10 comes in, midfielder, and they concede a goal. And right now, Malaysia can actually capitalise on that. He's one of the substitute centre-backs. They've got a right-back and a central midfielder playing in the two centre-back positions. Abdul Wahab Ali has no shadow. Couldn't pick out the pass for... Kunalan. This is game on for Malaysia and Bahrain. It's all for the taking. 20 minutes left with extra time. I tell you what, we've seen two goals of real, real quality here. And no Sharo there, trying to pick out the run of Amriaya. In the far post. Kunalan. Sorry, it was Kunalan. Amri who gave the throw, quick throw. And if that could have found Gunalan, he was empty at the far post. World-class strike from North Shower Lidland Talaha. That'll banish those Kalantan Blues. Carol Farmy lets one out of the air. North Shower the pressure from Abdullah Aman. Socks around the ankles now for several of the Bahrain players. It's the substitute Dawood. So it's a completely revamped back four. And who's come on though, Mohamed Salmin is he's, he's a genuine, genuine midfielder with some class. Now we preparing to come on. Tired. Held off by Kunala. The dead right, he works prodigiously hard at centre back. Uh, that uh, defensively Kunala. Cheryl takes a buffeting. Malaysia prepared to make the change as Moudin Akil to be replaced by Negri Sembalans, Nazrin. Nazrin Navi, who's had a terrific season, a sweet left foot, former teammate, and uh, he's, he's come up the ranks, a good young lad. It's a big stage for him tonight. No pressure, go and keep us in the Asia Cup, son. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Three crosses. That's all it needs. Nazrin will start on the left. Kunalan shifted to the right. Here is Kunalan. Shafiq! Caught that one ever so well. You know, they believe this Malaysia team. They believe. The positive thing about Roger Gopal's side is they have belief, determination, hard work, and that's what you get, and that could have gone in, and that's better from Shafiq from the first try. And 
Bahrain has actually taken a backseat in the last 15 minutes or so. Last time you said that, they scored. Against the run of play. Zayed Mohamed walks in straight to his opposite number. There's, well, there's a couple of injuries. We've got Abdullah Aman down at one end, and at the other end, Amarid's Taj. Players taking the opportunity to grab as much liquid as they can. Here's the goal. Talk us through the technical end. Well, he takes the ball on his left, brings it to his right, knew exactly what he was going to do as soon as the ball was there. Sees a little bit of the goalkeeper being a bit much to his right. But even if he's on the right position, it is always going to be a tough asking for the goalkeeper to get any touch to that ball. And that's how good the strike of No Sharo Ilan Talaha was. Salmin into Tayeb. The problem with Mohamed Salmin is if the other players aren't on his wavelength, he could be a little bit, um, what's the word I'm after, difficult to be on the same team as. Must have been a carrying a knock or a little injury to be starting on the bench. Oh, closed down by Amri Yaya. No Sharon. Oh, given away by Ruben. Abdul Wahab. Ali Tayeb. Saved by Cairo Farmi. And Ruben's the most relieved man in Malaysia. And you can see he gave the ball away. But you don't give Bahrain this kind of chances because they will take it. You will pay for it. It's a good save for Carol for me. He took a, one step to his left. They actually got that covered. That could have creeped in at the far post. It's a third corner, though, to Bahrain. That means well, they've lost some of their physical presence. Mohamed Salmin's decent in the air. Ali Tayeb's a big, strong fella. Dawood's up there as well. It's gone beyond them all. Amaridzwan lets it run out. 11 and a half minutes. Malaysia trying to turn a one-goal half-time deficit into three points. Shafiq finds Henry Yaya. This is Nazrin. Kunalan. Kunalan. And there's another problem defensively for Bahrain. This time it's Abdullah Aman who's gone down. Now, is that cramp as Nazrin floats his first ball in? An early cross, sees the run of Amriyaya, try to pick him out. And disappointing from Kunalan. As soon as he went on his left, the weaker left, you can see. Was short of ideas, trying to find a teammate. But he should have tried to take on. Try and take on, go to the bar line and do a cut back. It's the only accusation you can throw at Kunalan, isn't it? The final ball, the final finish, the, the hard work, the effort, the, the involvement. Commitment to the cause, they're all absolutely top draw. Anthony 
Hansen is looking a, a little bit more worried than he was earlier on. Well, he knows that the defensive changes that he has made has been causing trouble for his own team. Just the one change so far from Raja Gopal. Mahali is warming up and he's running out of time. in this next nine minutes or so. Going to Manama, not an easy task. That's the, the next trip for them. By a home match against Qatar, 15th and 19th of November, both live on Astro Arena in Malaysia. <laughs> Just easing into the back of Wahab Ali. Bahrain have indeed struggled with the changes they have made so far. Not been the same team since that defensive injuries they've had to their centre backs. And Malaysia should take that chance to capitalise on it. Temporarily down to 10 men are the red shirts of Bahrain. They'll stay to punch above their weight for a decade or so. as well. Tayeb. Dawood makes a surging run. Blocked by Azrudin. He has his critics, but not too many people get past Azrudin. One of those critics <laughs> is Dawood. Give and go. Azrudin does enough. close to being a curse of the commentator. Oh, well done, Tarsar Rudy Putra. Good Allen doubling up on the defence. The dapper Tony Hudson. Touchline. Last time I saw him, he was a wet night at the Spitty Park in South Wales. There's no Cheryl. And Nasri. Cheryl. Good work from Abdul Wahab Ali. Zaidaya is strong enough to hold off Azrudin. Mohamed Salmin. Ooh. Next one. A little bit like um, well, the first one looked a foul. It wasn't. The second one was. Well, there's no malice intention. Completely looking at the ball, trying to get in, but it was absolutely late from him. Nazrin. Not a great ball in from Nazrin. Malaysia. Not long to influence things, just five minutes. No Sharrell, the outstanding player of the game, Gurusami. 
If he looks right, he'll see Kunalan. Kunalan's cross. Done by Ali Wahab. Shafiq to Azrudin. Amri does well. Kunalan. This time to the byline. No, Cheryl. Uh, Nazrin can't keep it in play. And that's going to be Kunalan's last contribution. And he's going to be replaced by Fakri Sarani. He's worked his socks off. Done brilliantly down the left, then down the right. But a little bit lack of accuracy in that last cross. It could have got that, that onto the path of Amriya. And I can see where Rajagopal is bringing Papi Sarani on. He's a hard-working horse. But he must have told him to go a bit more direct, try to go to the byline, as you were saying earlier. And try and capitalize on that, on that tired backline or that makeshift backline of Bahrain. Ruben flies in as only K. Ruben does. And Amri comes into the Wahab. Wali inside Ahmad. Bahrain so impressive in possession in the first half. Found it a little bit more difficult this second half. They've got a free kick here for Abdul Wahab Al Maloub, just caught by Guru. It's Dawood. Side Daya. It was late in the first half. Bahrain scored. Daya finds Dawood. Salmi. It's a pass from Mohamed Salmin. Oh, Ruben clears for Mohamed Salmin to Dawood. Danger. And that's, and that's why there's a bit of criticism on Asaruddin Putra again being caught out. Goes out too close to his right midfielder. Opens that opening. He should be more inside to make sure that the ball goes ahead of him, not behind him. Fourth corner to Bahrain. Salmanisa. Cleared by Adil at the near post off the top of his head. Could see him. Ouch. Two minutes. Would a draw be a good result from Stanley Bernard? Well, a win would be certainly a better result, but they've done well in the second half. Malaysia has been dominating in the second half. It'd be disappointing not to go with a win. Bayern has left off the hook. In the second half, they've not created many chances. Malaysia has been the better team, but there's still time remaining to go on and try and get at three points. And now it. Black stays down. Zaid Amaridzwan. I think he fancies staying in this team for the return in Bahrain. Dawood. Side Daya. Now then, no Sharon. Got to run 80 yards. Wahabali tracked him every step of the way. Impressive from Wahabali. He's been on a yellow card since the second minute and has put a foot wrong since. Salmin, Saeed, what a tackle, Amaritwan. Throw in to Malaysia. Quality tackle for Amiris one has been solid today. A good shift in, good performance. Ideal and him has done pretty well tonight. Malaysia one, Bahrain one. A cracker from Abdullah Aman in first half injury time, giving Bahrain the lead. No Charlotte Lantalaha with a goal. Every bit as good midway through the second half. Side 
Ahmad. The players forward. Tayeb. Well defended by Adil. Wanted the foul, doesn't get it. Adil looks for a 60 yard glory pass to Amri Yaya. Nearly comes off. Guru to Shafiq. Here we go. No Sharol Idlan Talaha. No Sharol. What a story that would have been. Fitri Omar is going to come on for the last few seconds. There's a quality shot again from No Sharol. This time to the right of the goalkeeper, changing his direction, put it low. And I thought that went in as soon as he left, top his foot. But you can see the urgency of the Malaysian players, knowing how important a win could be and a draw could not be much of a help tonight. the target there is Fakri stronger than Salmanisa Ruben Fakri Shafiq the storybook end of Malaysia Guru Shafiq no Sharon looks for Guru Sami Belts it clear at the last second. Corner number three for Malaysia. Excellent movement off the ball for Malaysian players. And that is what you get when you move off the ball well. A good build up in there, and that could have just been a plate for Amriya only for the last touch of the bar in centre back. But Malaysia's throwing everything they can. Shafiq's corner. Post. Mohamed Salmi. It'll be one heck of an introduction if Fiji Omar can do anything in the last 90 seconds as Rudin comes off. Two minutes. That's Nazrin. No Sharol. It's a performance from No Sharol Idlan Talaha. Shafiq. Gurusami. Good block by Abdullah. Victory. It's not the best uh, introduction to international football. Amri's flick. Samanisa back to his goalkeeper. Nerves out there, both teams. Salmanisa, he'll slow things down. Salmin. Abdul Wahab. Bahrain good enough to keep the ball. Dawood. Saeed dispossessed. Shafiq didn't have the pace. Nazrin, corner kick for Malaysia. Last chance. Shafiq will trot over. Nazrin, leave it, son. He's been waved away and Amaritwan told to stay back. They like the win, but they don't want to lose. Nazrin has got five in the box. And that is the final act have an absorbing AFC Asian Cup tie. It's finished, one apiece. Stanley Bernard, your thoughts? Well, I've been really, really impressed with the Malaysia's performance in the second half. They've been absolutely brilliant. They, they worked really hard. Their determination, they wanted the win. They, they put the urgency needed in a football match, the pace of the game. And the disappointing part is the result. They come away with a 1-1 draw. But you'll take it as long as they didn't lose. And Bahrain, after the defensive change in the second half, they were not the same team. So Rajagopal lives to fight another day. Uh, a goal for Norsha.